Hello again, so today I'm in a Mini Cooper Coupe, which is possibly the weirdest Mini they've ever made. Apart from that one with the giant can of Red Bull strapped to its back. Now, about six or seven years ago, I was at the LA Motor Show when this was launched, and the people there were talking about the, uh, the designers had, had created it to look like it was wearing a baseball cap backwards, which is the strangest design ever, isn't it? But you can see what they're talking about because it kind of does look like that. From the front, it looks like somebody wearing a baseball cap and it's pinned their hair back. And from the side, you can see like the, uh, the peak sticking over the back. It's also got this spoiler that you can raise or lower. I think it, it, I think it does it automatically when you get to 60 or 70. They usually do. Now I bought this Mini a few days ago because they always seem to sell quite well. And I thought with this being the coupe, I've never had one before and I thought it's rarity might, um, might help it sell. I mean, minis in general, I've had lots of them, and they do always sell, but they're, um, they're not the most reliable cars. I've had loads of issues with minis, with timing chains and camshaft sensors, crankshaft sensors, O2 sensors. The early ones suffered with bad gearboxes. Um, the, early, the early automatics were terrible. In fact, I've never driven a good early automatic mini. And the manuals, the gearboxes would whine, the synchros would wear, so they'd crunch between gear changes. Just weren't a... Um, reliable products at all. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the engines were a Peugeot engine. And why would BMW do that? Who thought that was a good idea? So as a result, they just weren't reliable. Now the original Mini launched in 1958, and they ran with that same model till the year 2000. And that gives you an idea of why the British car industry went bankrupt, and now it's all owned by foreign companies. How can they have thought that that design from 1958 was still relevant in the year 2000? They were either lazy designers or they just had no money. I'm guessing a bit of both, actually. Now, I've never had an original Mini. I'm probably too young for it, to be honest. Every car magazine and every motoring show will tell you that everyone in the UK has had an original Mini at some point in their life, but not me. I've never even driven one. I mean, they're an iconic British symbol, the original Mini. But so is a red phone box that we've just passed. And I don't want to own one of those either. When BMW launched the new Mini in 2001, I think they got the design just right. It was retro, but still traditional. The weird thing is with Minis, they've designed them to be a bit of a girl's car, really. It's a bit cute, a bit, a bit girly. But yeah, when you drive one, the steering's heavy. The gearbox is quite tough to get it in gear. The clutch is heavy. The ride is really firm. It's a, it's a proper driver's car. You can have good fun in a, in a Mini. It sticks to the road really well. It grips and handles superbly. So any middle-aged woman that wants a Mini for its looks, they won't like the drive. So it kind of goes against the styling. They've designed it for an audience and then alienated that audience by having it drive like a, like a driver's car. Your average 40 odd year old woman that likes the look of it won't like the drive of it. They won't want to put up with a ride that's this firm just to nip to Tesco. Now this one's a 1.6 and it produces about 120 horsepower. Now they do do an S version with about 175 horsepower and I've had a couple of those and they are really good fun to drive. I don't understand why they thought this sat nav was a good idea. It was a factory option this sat nav, but it's right right in your line of sight. I do love how this one looks. I like how it drives. It doesn't feel like a small, cheap car. I like the colour. I like the wheels. I like how the spoiler pops up. Now, it's a weird idea for a design, this, but it kind of works. That said, it wasn't a great success, and they've now stopped making the coupe. I mean, at the same time, they also released the similarly weird Paceman, which also has been scrapped. I think Mini must have been trying to soak up all the small car sales by offering lots of different options. This coupe is only a two-seater, so it's even more impractical than a normal Mini. But because it's only a two-seater, the boot you get is massive. So Minis in general, they're quite expensive to buy compared to anything else small. They're quite expensive to run compared to anything else in this category. They're quite expensive to maintain. They're not the most reliable either, as I've, as I've said, with timing chain issues and everything else. They're probably the best looking small cars. 
they're definitely the best to drive. And I hate to say this because it sounds like a big cliche, but I'm gonna say it anyway. They're just full of character. And I hate that word because it's just lazy. It's a lazy way of trying to explain why a car's good even though it's not good. But there's definitely some character with this that you wouldn't get in a Fiat Punto or a, or a Ford Fiesta. And it does feel like a more upmarket car. I think because it's made by BMW, the materials they use are very good. And the, the interior, everything feels well made. Everything feels like it's built to last rather than a Fiat Punto where everything you touch actually falls off in your hand. Now, this is a 2012 and it's done 50 odd thousand miles and you'll get one of these for six and a half, seven grand. Which I think is quite a good price to be honest because like I say, it is quite a premium little car. This one has the chili pack, which I think is a must if you're looking for a used mini. You just get far more options than you do with a standard one. So if you want a small car that's very reliable, then buy a Toyota Yaris or a Honda Jazz. But if you want something with a bit of character that's fun to drive, that looks cool, then I'd definitely recommend a Mini. I don't know if I'd recommend the Coupe because they are quite impractical. But it would suit somebody that wants to stand out from the crowd a little bit. I mean, you see loads and loads of Mini hatchbacks on the road, but you rarely see the Coupes. This one has electronic power steering, but you'd never know because it handles really well. Usually cars with electronic power steering. The steering's too light, too fake, too artificial. But this feels weighty and accurate and precise. Yeah, they're not the cheapest things to run. You'll average probably 35 miles per gallon, which doesn't sound bad, but for a small car, it's not brilliant. <laughs> they are good fun to drive though. They just handle so well. So thanks once again for watching, I'll see you next time.